Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today at this uh, webinar on decriminalizing bounce checks. This is the second in a series of update webinars being held by Afridi and Angel this week. Uh, the webinar will be led or is led by Shatura Randinia. Um, throughout the webinar, I urge you to please submit your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box, uh, in the Q&A box. And as we, we will be monitoring questions uh, throughout and we'll pause in the middle of the presentation to addre address questions as well as at the end of the presentations. So please do submit questions as you go along. Again, without further ado, uh, thank you. And, uh, and over to you, Shatura, thank you. Thanks, Samara. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, uh, you can't see it on your screen, but I can see it on mine. We have uh, enough people uh, to fill uh, a fairly reasonably sized conference venue. So uh, clearly a lot of interest in the topic. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to do justice uh, uh, within the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, I am obliged, uh, for those of you who don't know, to, to, to speak a little bit about Afridi and Angel. Um, uh, we've been here since 1975. We are a proudly UAE firm, uh, but we have uh, the capability, particularly through our Lex Mundi uh, uh, organization, uh, to put clients in touch with and work with some of the leading independent counsel throughout the world. Uh, my own practice uh, uh, deals with dispute resolution and, as you may imagine, uh, bounce checks uh, and other securities uh, frequently come across my table. So what are we looking at here? All of us living in the UAE uh, would have at some point or the other grappled with the fact that the simple act of writing a check could eventually under the wrong circumstances, land us in prison. It's perhaps uh, something for as simple as, you know, an employer not paying on time, your funds not being received as planned, and perhaps only by a few, few hundred dirhams shortfall here and there. Um, this has uh, engendered two things. Uh, one is uh, a lot of circumspection uh, as individuals when we are signing checks, and also as uh, far as uh, businesses go, uh, where checks uh, became, uh, post-dated checks, uh, became a very viable and efficient form of security. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded to a time a couple of years ago when a friend of mine uh, actually sold his car uh, based on a post-dated check. He uh, learned his lesson very quickly. Uh, um, that's a bit of an extreme example, but it serves, uh, it serves the point. So what we'll be looking at is uh, the recent decriminalization of writing a check, which is later dishonored for the lack of funds, uh, a bounce check. Uh, it has received a lot of uh, attention in the media, uh, but it's important to note that not every check-related offense has been decriminalized. There are still uh, offenses that will attract penal consequences if you fall foul of them. So we'll look at what the changes are uh, and what remains the same. We will also then consider uh, whether checks are still a viable form of security and what remedies you may have as the recipient of a check. Uh, and take a look at uh, how the changes in the law are being implemented at a practical level, uh, uh, particularly within the uh, Emirate of Dubai. So that's just to signpost what we will be going through uh uh the next half an hour or so so the change itself is not very new uh it was first uh, uh it was it was made by federal decree number 41 of 2020 uh and has been uh, uh signaled uh to parties for uh about one and a half years and it has come to effect uh on the 2nd of january 2022 now it's one of the many legal changes that have happened uh, since the beginning of this year, or have come into effect since the beginning of this year, and certainly it is one of the most talked about. Uh, the implementation of uh, 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 the civil remedies in particular in the Emirate of Dubai, even though the law is effective from the 2nd of January, will only uh, start on the 2nd of February until the Dubai execution courts come up to speed with the procedures that are required uh, to put the law into effect, and I'll get into that uh, as we go along. And what 
the federal decree does was repeal certain provisions of the penal code, hence the decriminalization part, and amend certain provisions of the UA commercial code, uh, dealing with checks, uh, and uh, in particular takes the issue of dishonored checks uh, from the criminal realm into the civil realm, where uh, in my view, it, it rightfully belongs. So I think everybody knows what the highlight is. Uh, drawing a check that is subsequently bounced is no longer a crime. And what the position used to be before the 2nd of uh, January uh, of this year was that Articles 401, 402, and 403 of the UAE Penal Code uh, set out certain crimes, and those are listed there, which is uh, drawing or endorsing them in bad faith, a check without a sufficient balance, so obviously uh, uh, dishonor due to lack of funds, writing a check in a manner that makes it unpayable, or ordering a, a bank not to make payment. Now, you'd see from that first uh, sub-bullet point there that a requirement of bad faith was there in the law. It has always been there, but in practice, uh, the courts, the criminal courts really did not consider the fact whether there was any bad faith, whether there was any intention uh, uh, for uh, to write a check that you knew would uh, bounce in the future. It's, it was approached almost as a question of strict liability. And as we go along in this uh, uh, presentation, you'll see that some of the remaining offenses still have that element of intention uh, that, is, uh, that must be proved in order to be uh, attract criminal uh, sanction. But uh, given uh, the experience on how this law has been uh, implemented in the past, it's always safest to proceed on the basis that it is a strict liability offense. Strict liability meaning uh, it doesn't really matter whether you had an intention to commit a, a, a crime or not, if the facts amount to uh, 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 something that is penalized, then you will be punished for it. Uh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. This is exactly what I said just a minute ago. So this, now we've considered what's not a crime. Let's look at what it still is a crime. And this is summarized in the table that's on your screen. So what you will notice here is that these acts of offenses are really more traditionally what you would see considered to be uh, to be a crime. Uh, there is uh, an element of wrongfulness or fraud that's clearly evident here. So let's just run through them quite quickly. So if you de deliberately write a check in a manner that makes it unbearable, you know, if you put a wrong signature, uh, it's a crime, uh, and uh, at, and you could be fined at an amount not less than ten percent of the check's value as a minimum of 5,000 dirhams and a maximum of double the value of the check. And you may, you may also get an imprisonment term of not less than six months, or you may only get the imprisonment term. So in the same category, uh, closing an account or withdrawing all funds before a check is presented or ordering a bank not to make payment. So if you know that you've written a check and it's uh, falling due and you don't want payment to be made, and you clear out your bank account, that is still a crime um, and punishable uh, in the way that I just described. The same goes for endorsing or delivering a bearer check there the punishment is a slightly, a sl slightly different. It's still 10%, uh, the minimum uh, is uh, a thousand dirhams and the maximum uh, uh, is the value uh, of the check. Um, Finally, uh, you have forging a check. These are the most serious offenses under the law. Forging a check, knowingly using a forged or counterfeit check, uh, knowingly accepted funds uh, that you use uh, through a, a counterfeit check, uh, you know, having uh, machinery to forge a check and so on, attract very high fines between 20,000 and 100,000 dirhams. And so, it's, it's, so you get uh, a, a, a prison sentence and a, a fine, a prison sentence of not less than one year. And if any of these are for the purposes of ter terrorism uh, or funding terrorism, uh, you could be facing life imprisonment and a fine of between half a million and a million uh, dirhams. Now, again, you will see that there are, you will see the language as knowingly used or deliberately using. 
again, uh, those are elements in the crime, but in practice, uh, we should always uh, anticipate that the courts will, in, uh, will take a strict liability approach, whereas they will not be too concerned about what your state of mind was if these acts have actually happened. So there's additional punishment uh, in uh, 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 more than what, what, what we've just discussed. So the court may actually name and shame convicted de uh, defendants by publishing their names, their professions, and their addresses, and the sentence that was imposed on them uh, in two widely circulated dailies in the UAE or in electronic publications. So clearly it's supposed to have a very strong deterrent effect. Uh, don't do this, uh, otherwise, you know, not only will you be punished, you'll be you'll be identified as an offender. Now, it's rather unusual given that uh, the UAE uh, places a premium uh, on privacy and confidentiality. So this just, this just goes to show how serious an offense uh, the legislators consider this to be. Uh, in the first two categories of offen uh, offenses, I'll just take you back. This is uh, deliberately writing a check or closing an account or telling a bank not to pay or endorsing or delivering a barrier check without sufficient funds. For those two categories, a court may actually conf uh, confiscate uh, your checkbooks and prevent uh, the, the uh, accused or, or, or the convict from obtaining a checkbook for five years. And any banks that issue checkbooks uh, uh, to a person or a uh, in violation of such, a, of such an order will be fined. Uh, where the offense has been committed in the course of conducting business, uh, you can actually prohibit a convicted defendant from conducting that business for up to three years. Uh, and this I think will be the last bullet point will be quite in, uh, interesting to people at a man managerial level. Where a crime has been, where one, any of the foregoing crimes have been committed in the name of or for the benefit of a corporate entity, the presumption is that, or the default position is that the individual, the human being uh, who is managing the entity will not be held criminally liable unless uh, the prosecution can prove that he or she was aware of the crime or that it was uh, done for the personal benefit or the, of that particular person or the benefit of a third party. Now, how this is going to be implemented, uh, of course, is going to, uh, is, is, is yet to be seen. So, uh, so that's really the criminal element of it. And before I move to the civil element, maybe I can just run through a couple of questions that we've received. Um, uh, there's one question, uh, not be, uh, be a civil offense. Yes, it will be a civil offense. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll deal with that in the next uh, uh, couple of slides. Uh, and one question has been, uh, is uh, one of the benefits of having a criminal action was that parties can still get, can get a travel ban. Can we still get travel bans? Yeah. So one of the great advantages of having a criminal offense is that you could go to the police, file the complaint, and almost immediately get a travel ban. Uh, against uh, the uh, against the uh, accused, uh, preventing that person from leaving the country, um, that is no longer available, or at least a travel ban through the police is will no longer be available. But as we will see in the slides uh, 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 that follow, uh, you can still get a, a travel ban from uh, a court uh, and at the beginning of the proceedings rather than at the end. So yes, a travel ban is still possible. It just comes from a different uh, authority. Uh, it may, it should be not quite as quick as, uh, uh, as a ban through the police, but still it should be quite fast. Just go one more question. Yeah, so, so let's move on. So here's the important question particularly for companies, is it still valuable as security? I think the short answer is yes. Uh, what the law has done is to take away the criminal aspect of it and give you enhanced civil remedies. Now, having a bounce check as a criminal offense, for me personally, has always been quite problematic. 
uh, because it ends up in parties going down the criminal route or trying to seek criminal relief, essentially to put pressure and obtain relief for a civil matter. Now, the law redresses that, and it's a welcome development because it puts us on par uh, with uh, most of the other jurisdictions uh, uh, where what we have now is, 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 is the case that, uh, that has always been in these other places. Um, what the law has done is to create a provision that says a bounce check is going to be deemed to be an executive instrument. An executive instrument is uh, a document that's recognized by the law as being immediately executable. So you don't need to go through the whole process of proving a case. Now, before this law came into effect, you could sue on a check. Uh, you could go for ordinary proceedings or you could have gone for what is known as a payment order, a summary proceeding, which is an ex parte uh, 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 mechanism that's available uh, for creditors to say, look, I have an admission of debt. You give me judgment immediately. And then that judgment uh, uh, is given without notice to the defendant and uh, there's only 15 days to appeal it. Um, but still, it took a little longer, a uh, little more time, and you still had to pay uh, a court fees of, you know, depending on where the, uh, on the emirate that you are in, up to six six percent, uh, up to a cap uh, capped at forty thousand dirhams. So there's still a significant amount of time and cost that you had to incur. Now the requirement for that is gone because you take check and you can go straight to the execution court. So how do you do that? So. If you have a bounce check, you need to get uh, you need to get it uh, you need to get a certification from the bank to say that the check has bounced. Once you have that, you go to the uh, to uh, the execution execution department of uh, the court, and you get it stamped uh, as uh, an executive doc uh, executive instrument, and that is now applied electronically and quite quickly. Once that is there, you can file an application to register an execution case. And the court fee that you pay is capped at 5,000 dirhams. So already uh, you're saving money. Uh, and once the execution uh, case is registered, the court will serve uh, the execution on the respondent uh, to pay the amount within 15 days or to object. And if that it is not paid, uh, the court will issue letters uh, to seize the assets of the company. Now, what used to be the case in execution, civil execution cases, is that you couldn't really get a travel ban until you'd sort of finished this process. But under a, a directive that was recently issued, I think last week or the week before, uh, by the Dubai uh, uh, Attorney General's office, uh, execution court uh, uh, officers, there's provision that's made to ask for a travel ban at the same time that you file the execution case. So what you will be doing in practice, I mean, it's yet to be tested, but what has been foreseen is at the time you take your check with, with the, the certification from the bank, you get it stamped, you file the execution case. At the same time, it's in the same form, you tick a box that says, give me a travel ban. And you pay the court fee on that, which I think is depending on the Emirate in Dubai, it's about a thousand dirhams. So you get that travel ban, uh, we can apply that for that travel ban uh, quite fast in the case of a bounce check. Um, so another feature that was changed uh, in the law was now partial payment is recognized. So what this does is it's no longer a zero sum game. You can, if, if, you, if, you, if you have a check for a million dirhams and you know, uh, there's only 900 dirhams in the bank, uh, 900,000 dirhams in the bank, you still get paid the 900,000 dirhams and you can pursue uh, your credit, uh, 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 the issuer of the check uh, for the balance 100,000 dirhams. Uh, the banks are required to make partial payment and inform uh, and issue a certificate to that effect and issue, uh, and, uh, issue a notification uh, to the central bank. Uh, they must initial the back of the check saying that partial payment has been made and return the original. And if this is an outstanding amount, then you go to the execution court uh, and you ask for that outstanding amount as, as set out in that, uh, uh, in that form. And you can ask for a travel ban uh, at the same time. So 
that's the position uh, as it is now, uh, which raises the question, uh, what about cases that were filed before the 2nd of January? Uh, you may have cases which are pending with the police. You may have cases which are under investigation. You may have cases which are in the courts. So to deal with this, uh, the Dubai courts, uh, uh, the Dubai public prosecution issued a circular uh, in December on uh, how these cases are to be uh, dealt with. And on the face of it, what it seemed to suggest was that, you know, this law was being given retrospective application. But in fact, there is a provision in the uh, UAE penal code that says, if there's a change in law, the law more favorable to the accused uh, is must be applied. And this is a reflection or implementation of that rule. So if you were, if, if you'd committed a crime in December, uh, under current law, you're, you have not committed a crime and these regulations uh, are going to uh, address that. So here's a summary of that. Uh, I don't necessarily propose to go through the whole thing, uh, but essentially what it does is if it's at the stage of a police investigation or a prosecution investigation, they're supposed to close the file and revoke any travel bans that have been granted uh, by them uh, before this uh, uh, law came into effect. Where it is pending before the court, the prosecutors are required to withdraw those actions. And in fact, uh, where there are cases uh, pending uh, before the uh, uh, Court of Appeal or the Court of Cassation, or the, Cassation, the prosecutor who is handling the matter is required to apply for a cancellation of the appeal judgment and seek an order that acquits the defendant. And although this has not yet uh, been uh, implemented or this, 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 uh, this mechanism is not yet in place, uh, for cases where there's already been a final judgment issued, that means you know, either it has not been appealed and it has become final or you know, the appeals have been exhausted, exhausted and it has become final, uh, the uh, authorities, authorities are supposed to liaise with each other uh, to cancel all this enforcement of judgments, issuing cancelling orders for the arrest of the defendant and so on. Uh, something that has not yet been considered is what this does to, you know, you know, certificates of good standing, etc., et that have been issued. Presumably, if uh, somebody needs it, then they can get uh, a certificate from the police or the prosecution to say that, you know, these are no longer crimes and, you know, they've been acquitted uh, or, or those uh, execution proceedings have been uh, revoked. Uh, and that brings me to the end of uh, this deck of slides. I'll go through, uh, got a few additional questions. Uh, we've got uh, one question. What if the check was bounced a few years ago, like four or five years back, can the company still file the payment order, get execution order? Um, the law doesn't say anything uh, about that, but uh, provided that it's not uh, prescribed, uh, it's not time barred, then the civil remedy still lies. Uh, uh, so that's, that's, that's the short answer uh, uh, to that. I think uh, it's not a question of a check going stale. Uh, and this should be covered. I mean, the, the, the prescription periods in the UAE are fairly generous uh, for, uh, for, uh, for commercial, for, for actions between commercial trans, uh, traders. Uh, the, the, the time period is 10 years, so long, so long as you're within it, uh, you can still uh, invoke the current mechanism uh, and get that relief. Uh, it says, what about receiving an undated security check which is utilized upon default. So the law doesn't really have, especially consider what a security check is. A check is a check uh, as far as it is concerned. So if it has, if so that's the analysis that a court is likely to apply. Uh, the, if there's a check that has been dishonored for the lack of funds, then you can follow this mechanism. It has been dishonored for any other reason than like, you know, deliberately making it unpayable or clearing out the accounts, then the criminal remedy uh, uh, is the way to go. Uh, one question that still we don't know the answer to is that in, in the ordinary case, you know, one month ago, 
uh, if you had, if you wanted to make a civil case for the recovery of the debt, because a criminal action would not result in you getting your money back. Now, it might put pressure on the defendant to try and settle because nobody wants to, you know, pay a fine or go to prison. Um, they'll say, okay, fine, we'll, we'll enter into a settlement. But getting a criminal conviction against a judgment, uh, against the, the, the debtor or, or the issue of the check, uh, doesn't result in a civil remedy for you. Uh, the, and that had to be done through civil proceedings. And in the civil proceedings, a defendant could always come up and say, no, no, this check was not payable because either because, you know, I'd already settled the debt or the debt was not due. Uh, like there was, no, there was no default or cause to uh, present that. It's now not clear where a defendant might get a chance to object to that because you don't, you, you bypass the civil courts altogether and you go straight into the execution department of the civil courts. Uh, so, and in the ordinary, in ordinary execution cases, there's only very limited defenses or objections that you can take uh, to enforcement of a judgment, uh, which are largely procedural in nature. And this is a substantive defense to say, well, the debt is not due. So this, I think, is something that will be considered in due course uh, to say what happens if you have an executive instrument, but the person who uh, wrote the check comes up and says, well, that uh, debt was uh, never due. So that is, for the time being, a gray area, uh, but we think that will be uh, remedied very quickly. I mean, the courts are putting procedures into place. One of the reasons that they've so right now, so just to let you know, if you have a check today and you go to the execution court, the execution court will not accept it because the execution court in Dubai will only accept those applications after the 2nd of February because they need time to get their uh, procedures in place. Um, and uh, so, so it's quite likely that there will be uh, provisions made for, uh, uh, for this uh, kind of question as we go along. Um, what else? Uh, oh, um, I have one question. If a court orders for seizure of assets, then how bank was going to pay its contingent liabilities, if any, pending? Uh, if there has been a seizure of bank, uh, bank accounts, uh, then you're essentially not permitted to transact on those. And if you want to transact on those, you'll need to go uh, uh, and get permission from uh, the court. In practice, very difficult. Uh, you, uh, and there's a lot of discretion involved. You may need to put alternative uh, security in place uh, uh, for the court. Uh, it could be a guarantee, uh, a, a partial payment or whatever it may be that the court may order. But until, the bottom line is once there's a order attaching your accounts, then uh, you can't deal with that. But it's important to remember it's not an it's it's never an absolute it's absolute seizure. So if you may have uh, you know a million dirhams in your account and you get a attachment order for the value of eight hundred thousand dirhams, you're still theoretically allowed to transact with the, the with the balance. It's only the eight hundred thousand that needs to be maintained in the account by the bank. Uh, but again, it puts banks into a particularly tricky position as well, because you know a lot of these accounts are, are, could be on overdrafts, could be facilities and so on. So it has to be approached on a case by case basis. Uh, I've been asked for insight uh, regarding the Abu Dhabi procedure. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been anything that has been uh, put out uh, so far, I don't expect it to be significantly different from what is there in Dubai. I may be, I may be wrong, but I'm, I'm sorry, the short answer to that is uh, I don't know. But if you uh, uh, get in touch uh, with me later on, I'll be happy to find out and let you know. Um, we've got a question about a pending case of fraud, which is still ongoing. What is the effect of the new law with this kind of criminal case? Frauds. An investigation into fraud will continue. Uh, what has been decriminalized is a very, uh, very particular aspect uh, of checks. 
uh, if there was uh, if there was uh, an intention to commit fraud, then that is not going to be affected by this. This could be evidence of fraud. Uh, it just means that the sort of automatic, I mean, in Dubai, they used to put, you know, they used to have these one day courts uh, for these kind of uh, offenses where, you know, uh, you go in, in the morning and, you know, get convicted by lunch um, uh, because it was seen as a very sort of straightforward matter. Uh, is this your check? Is this your signature? Is this your account? Did it bounce? Yes. Then that's it. You committed a crime. So more complex crimes such as uh, frauds, there, I don't think there will be uh, an uh, be a impact at all. It's just that this one one finite area uh, has been decriminalized. But that's certainly, and like I said, there are still plenty of check related offenses. The law of fraud still continues. The, even the most recent uh, changes still maintain. Uh, the fraudulent elements are, are, are punishable, are, are crimes, are, are offenses, and are punishable, quite, quite, quite hefty punishments. So I don't see uh, a, an, an effect there. Um, one other question, given that partial payment mechanism has been introduced by UAE Central Bank, yes, does this affect the case presented by the check holder? If they presented for partial payment and the check holder managed to recover part of the value of the check, can they still file a legal case? Absolutely, yes. So, so there are a couple of things here. Uh, one is that you may have a check. I may have a contract with you for 10 million dirhams. Uh, I would have checks from you for five. Even if I get, you've defaulted, you owe me 10. I've cashed the five five million checks. Uh, it doesn't mean that I can't go for the full full ten million uh, at any time, uh, uh, at any time at all. Um, so, if you just have a check, okay, you have a check for one million. You manage to recover one hundred nine hundred thousand from it. A hundred thousand is still uh, due. You can sue under the check. So you can use the mechanism that's been prescribed by the law, which is to go make it an executive instrument start execution proceedings and try to recover the 100,000 that's due on the rest of that check. But you can also file uh, a civil case under the contract for the other 5 million that's due. So, so the fact that you've received partial payment doesn't make you worse off uh, as the holder of the check in any way. So it, it gives you a faster route to justice or a faster uh, remedy mechanism uh, based on up to the value of the check or the unpaid amount of the check and the rest of your uh, uh, rest of your uh, rights remain intact and you still have the right to go after that. Uh, one more question. Uh, can a beneficiary force banks to share account holder personal details since the same can lead to breach of confidentiality by the bank? Um, uh, personal details, no. Uh, you can't. I mean, the most as 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 a uh, as a beneficiary you can do is say, pay me. If they don't pay, uh, you have a right to get a certificate saying that either they don't what the reasons for non-payment are, uh, and if it's lack of funds, then you, you go down the civil route. You can't get the personal details of uh, an account holder. That is not something the banks uh, are required to give. Uh, they may certainly give it to the court if the court orders them to. Uh, sometimes it comes directly through the court. Sometimes it comes through court appointed experts. That's a different matter, but certainly a bank shouldn't be uh, giving uh, personal details of the account holder to uh, any third party. Um, yeah, uh, I have... Uh, one other question. Uh, um, what is the time a limitation period to file the case? Uh, yeah, uh, so there is a provision uh, in the commercial code. Uh, it says that there is a two year time bar. Uh, that uh, the implementation of that has been uh, has uh, has been a little bit checkered. Uh, of, of course, there's no system of binding precedent uh, uh, under UAE law. 
so to go back to that uh, first question, yes, if you have something, uh, you should have actioned it as a matter of prudence within two years, but there are certain uh, judgments which seem to suggest that uh, the two years don't apply in certain circumstances. Now, what it would, uh, what effect it would have pursuant to the change in law, uh, 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 it is too early to tell, we'll need to test it out. Uh, but yeah, in answer to that question, uh, uh, the prudent approach is to say, well, it's a two, it's, 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 a, it's a two year uh, limitation period and you should uh, proceed on, uh, on that basis. So it's never a good idea to uh, sort of sleep on your rights. I think uh, I think uh, that's the uh, ah, uh, we just we just got one uh, a couple of more questions. In a nutshell. In what circumstances would a bounce check not be considered a criminal offense? It depends on the reasons why it was it, it bounced. If it bounced for the fact that there weren't sufficient funds, then it's no longer a criminal offense. If it bounced because the bank account holder cleared the funds, it's still an offense. If it bounced because uh, the um, uh, it, it, was, it, it was signed or written in a way deliberately to make it unpayable, it's still an offense. So the only thing, and I can't stress this enough, the only thing that has been decriminalized is the act uh, bounce, a check uh, bouncing because there are insufficient funds. So everything else uh, is as it uh, used to be uh, now with and actually with enhanced penalties in certain cases. Uh, so here's a good question. These new rules are only associated with checks or it goes beyond like bill of exchange, promissory notes, etc. Uh, the current law, the decree 14, uh, deals only with checks. Um, and it's uh, limited to that uh, because that's what uh, really carried the criminal uh, consequences uh, previously. The others are, have always been uh, bills of exchange, promissory notes and so on. Uh, those always, uh, remain firmly in the uh, civil domain, uh, and that continues to be the case. Um, I think I've gone through all the questions. If there isn't anything else. Yes, I think uh, I think you covered it all, Shatura. Great. So uh, in that case, uh, again, uh, if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with us. Uh, please do, uh, and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, thanks for spending the last uh, hour, forty-five minutes with us, and thank you for your very engaging questions. I hope this has been useful. Uh, and uh, we do have a few more updates uh, on other areas of the law uh, lined up for the rest of the week, and uh, we hope you'll join us there as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And um, if, uh, if you have any more questions or if any questions do come through, uh, we will endeavor to answer uh, them by email. Uh, sorry, is there anything, Chad, that you want to say? Uh, yeah, sorry, I've got uh, two more questions. <laughs> Uh, okay. That's okay. Uh, that, that, that's good. That's good. Uh, uh, it's a bounced uh, PDC, a criminal offense. Um, like I said, uh, a post-dated check, uh, the law doesn't really distinguish between a current data and a post-dated check. They're only going to look uh, uh, it as, as a check and apply the law to it. So if it bounces, like again, we go to the same uh, answer that I gave a few minutes ago. If it bounces only because there were not uh, there, were, there weren't sufficient funds in the account. It's no longer an offense. If it re, if it uh, bounced for another reason, depending on what that reason is, then yes, uh, uh, it can be. Uh, one other question, can a bank also approach the court like an individual or a legal entity? Absolutely. If it is the beneficiary of, uh, uh, of a check, uh, then it is entitled to uh, seek the same remedies that's uh, available to everybody else. That's it, Samara. 
All right, thank you. Uh, we will uh, we will uh, share the recording and the slides with you afterwards. And uh, again, as uh, Shatura mentioned, if there are any questions, any issues, uh, feel free to get in touch with him directly, and uh, we will be happy to clarify. Thank you very much for your time.